Guys, welcome. It's Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. We're talking about the Bible, the Word of God. And uh, what, why are we doing that? Because we're going back to the basics, back to the round pin, go back to the foundational uh, items of Christianity and make sure we're we're right, okay? And so, first of all, we found out that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. Second of all, we found out that it can be a difficult book if you're not born again. Why? Because this is the Word of Truth, and we need the Spirit of Truth on the inside of us to teach us this thing because it's a spiritual book. Amen. So if you're not saved, that's why you don't understand the Word of God. And if there's areas of your life that you not, have not surrendered to God, that too can cause us not to have, that natural part of us can cause us not to understand the Word of God. Well then we found out the, the book is, uh, the Bible is a, a book of oneness. Why? Because it has one author. The author is the Holy Spirit. So who should teach Teach you the, the Word of God. It's the author of the book. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God who, who used men. He spoke to men. They wrote it down. They were inspired by Him. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about the fact that the Bible claims special powers. Special powers. Well, if you look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. So it's living and and powerful. Well, first of all, we know in John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14, it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we know it's talking about Jesus being the Word. Okay, so yes, Jesus was the Word, so is He the living Word? Yes, He is. But also, we are the living Word because we take this Word of God, apply it to our lives, and then He lives His life out through us, so we are the living Word of God. But the, this Word also is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, watch this, that pierces to the division of the soul and the spirit. Now. Once again, for those of you who have listened to Tack Room Devotional for quite some time, we talked about the fact that we are made up of three parts. We're spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is that part of us that's made in the likeness and image of God. Soul is that part, or that's our personality, that's our mind, will, and emotion. And of course the flesh, which is that part the outside that you can see on me and this is the part that's going to die when I go to heaven go back to dust but the spirit and the soul are going to go and be with Jesus Christ now the Bible says it's living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword that pierces to the division of the soul and the spirit in other words the this is so powerful it will cut away anything that separates the spirit and the soul from being one now we know that Satan is always trying to mess with our minds, but if we'll apply this, guess what? It'll cut away anything that will distract us or keep us from knowing the truth. It also says it pierces the division of the bone and the marrow. Now the bone is what gives structure to the flesh, to the natural man, but within that bone there's a process of, of producing the blood cells. And remember, life is in the blood. So this pierces the division of the natural man and the spiritual man. And then finally it said is it's, a, it's a discerner in, of the thoughts, of our thoughts. Well, I just said it pierces the division of the soul and the spirit. See, this discerns our thoughts and the, and the intents of our heart. That's how powerful this word is. Okay, we also find in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Now we know God is speaking this. He said, It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I send it. Once again, you see the power of this word. This word went forth from God through his Holy Spirit, ministered to and inspired uh, by the Holy Spirit, two men who wrote it down, and this, that's how powerful this is. It may have all these books and all these different people that are involved in it, but it's a book that flows in, in harmony and unity. Amen. We also find out that this book has cleansing power. If you look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and, and presented her to himself, holy and without blame, and washed her by the water of the word. See, there's a cleansing. If you look in John chapter um, 
John chapter 15, it talks about Jesus says, I'm the vine and you're the branches and my father is the vine dresser. And he says, you are washed and cleansed by the word. So there's a, there's a power, there's a cleansing power that comes from this word. There's also a reproductive power. We look in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 and it says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. It's a reproductive power. Also if you look in John chapter 3 verse 1 through 7 you will also see it there that it's involved in the in the um, um, born again process. Finally I want to show you that it also has a uh, nourishing power. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2 it says as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. This pure milk of this word will cause a baby Christian to grow. It says that in the passage just before. So it talks about as babes in Christ this milk of this word will cause you to grow. But we also see in Hebrews chapter 5, I think it's starting like with verse 10, it says, but we ought to be teachers by now, but we're not because we're, we're still needing the milk of the word. And anybody that is that only needs the milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But it goes on to say, but those who are mature desire the meat of the word and we have our senses, our spiritual senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Again, you see the power of this? There's, there's, there's power and there's cleansing and there's nourishing and there's reproductive power all through this book. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.